not disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? No. They suck. I've been telling you all season, Philly. They shit on you. They shit on you. (laughs) Don't you hear me? Jordan Uh. Davis, Caleb Carter, like, they shit on you. They shit on you. (laughs) They have shit on you. Here we go. Don't don't you hear me? Jordan Uh. Davis, Caleb Carter, like, they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? Hate the style. <sighs> well, good morning, people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. You know, um, I'm remembering the movie Glory. In there, the night before the big battle, they said, I'm not gonna worry about tomorrow because I have today. It's something like that. I'm, don't, I'm, I'm probably getting it wrong, but that was the gist of it. They knew they were facing impossible odds the next day, but they had today. And that's how I am right now. I know um, people are like, oh, you're going to get molly by the Steelers. And Justin Fields, oh my God, yesterday, Justin Fields, over 300 yards passing, 60 yards rushing, a couple of rushing TDs. The Steelers' offense came to life, life, and their defense looked like they were average. That's the crazy thing about football. We were all on the Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills, best team in the AFC bandwagon, and last week we were talking about how bad Baltimore was, and Baltimore molly wops them. It's crazy how quickly things change in the NFL. Two weeks ago, New Orleans was looking at a home Super Bowl. And now they're two and two. So even as bad as our team has looked at times, even the doom and gloom that everybody puts out there, the reality is is we don't know. Tyler Guyton might end up getting over the the penalties that we're getting and learns that inside, you know, those inside moves. Jalen Tolbert getting more time might end up being a better weapon. Jake Ferguson getting fully healthy may make him one of the better tight ends of football. Dak Prescott, he just keep doing what he's doing. We're going to be in better shape. And this defense, maybe some of these young guys that are now getting their first opportunities will get better with more experience and time in this new defense. So for those out there that say that the Cowboys season is done and that they got no chance over the next couple of weeks and that they're going to be two and five, I'll remind you that the best built team with all of the great parts and stuff looked like ass ass yesterday. Now, here's the thing that's funny. I'm going to enjoy this week. Oh, I'm going to enjoy, you know, like I said, I don't know about next week, but I'm going to enjoy this one because maybe next week is trash. So I'm going to make sure I get some fun this week. Here is where it's funny to me, okay? Here's where it's funny to me. Trevor Lawrence has literally lost like the last eight games, nine games, their team. And I'm not putting it solely on him. He's part of the problem. He got $55 million and nobody's batted an eye. Nobody has said maybe the Jags should have been thinking before they paid him. Mind you, he's got one playoff win in a game that he threw four interceptions in the first quarter. Here's another one of these examples that we have to look at because it's kind of crazy. You'll remember the year before last when everybody was talking about all of Dak Prescott's interceptions. Right now we have revisionist history where everybody's trying to save Deshaun Watson. They said, oh, my God, this would have been a 90 yard touchdown if it hadn't been for a holding penalty. So we're pointing that out. Uh, How many times we have had big plays with the Cowboys that were game changers that were called back because of penalties and nobody goes back and says, well, this was a great play by Dak. It was messed up. But here's what's funny. This one 
really caught my eye this morning because Emmanuel Acho said this one about Deshaun Watson. Watch this one. Okay, watch this. This is an interception. Yep. The stats say Deshaun Watson threw an interception. The tape says, what in the world? You can't just look at stats without watching the tape. You got to do both. The stats say Deshaun Watson threw an interception. The tape says, what in the world? You can't just look at stats without watching the tape. It's funny that that guy says that because I remember ident almost identical plays like that. In fact, I will say the one that Dak Prescott made to Noah Brown in the amount of traffic that was there in crunch time, because literally when Dak threw the football, you could not see the receiver, and it literally flashed just long enough for that ball to go in there and hit the man right on the hands. The ball gets tipped up and ends up being a pick six. But all of you guys, all of you, Acho, will say Dak Prescott, he's just a turnover machine. And here it is. Now you're actually saying what we say when it comes to Dak Prescott. Am I right on that? Because as I listen here, and we still, I still have people keep coming in in the chat. Oh, Dak's about to turn it over. Dak's about to turn it over. How about Trevor Lawrence and all his turnovers? If it weren't for Jalen Hurts having 27 turnovers since the beginning of last year, 27 27, Trevor Lawrence would be leading the league. And looking at Jalen Hurts, he had one good year. One good year. And you look at the rest of his body of work, he ain't that good. He ain't that good. But you guys constantly pump him up and talk about this, that, and the other. You know, and it's funny because the Eagles offense with all of the weapons that they've had, because mind you, he's made all those turnovers, majority of the time having all those playmakers on there. Better wide receivers, better tight end, better running game than what the Dak Prescott's had. Yet somehow, all we ever hear is Dak Prescott's garbage. It's funny because they always say, that the quarterback should elevate the players around them and will them to win. Did you get that from Jalen Hurts yesterday? Okay, I'm just checking. Um, this is, like I said, I'm going to have fun. I got an email from, from, from a, I think, a 49er fan who, who said that he had to turn me off because I was going so deep on the Eagles. You know what I say to that is... Do you know how much shit I've taken from Dan Leo and Philly 500 about my team and my players for week after week after week? I finally had the opportunity to say something, and now I'm the bad guy? Well, feel free not to watch. But this is funny, the arrogance of Eagles before the game. I'm only 30 minutes on the road. I'm going to put belt and ass today. Belt and ass today. A few moments later. Mayfield looking left. Got a roll in left. Jonathan, it's Evans. Touchdown, Tampa. <laughs> oh. Throw it again. Over the middle. And Jody Evans. Belt to asses. I'm only 30 minutes on the road. I'm going to put belt to ass today. I'm going to put belt to ass today. Belt to ass today. Well, you got one word right. You were ass. Your team was ass. Oh, it's 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 so good. It's so good. I'm going to enjoy listening to the implosion that is um, with the Eagles this week. Okay, again. You know, and they got two weeks because they've got the bye week now to, 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 to milk this. Now, back to our Cowboys. Our Cowboys, we got 
you know, like everybody else, we got injuries. We may have good news. Deron Bland is expected to get some more work starting, you know, the first practice of the week and things. And we'll find out if he's going to be able to return. Unfortunately, Micah Parsons is probably going to be gone till the bye week. D-Law may be gone as much as eight weeks. And with the Cowboys, when they say four to eight, four is the optimistic side, which usually doesn't translate into actually happening. Expect more of it being the eight-week variety. We as fans will look, and there's always the whole talking points stuff that goes on. Cowboys, Khalil Mack, you know, we're, we're you know, looking at Khalil Mack. Okay, you know, they're, they're going to throw a big-name player at you. You know, I, I've said I wouldn't mind seeing them try and make a move for maybe even Hassan Reddick. But here's the reality, but even about Hassan Reddick, getting him now, he's got to learn your system. He's got to get into football shape. By the time Hassan Reddick, because he has not been working out with the team and in football shape, is he's probably not going to be ready until after Micah Parsons is back. And then we know that the Cowboys, you know, we we can't afford. We can't afford. We can't ever afford Jack when we are the Dallas Cowboys. We can't afford is what we always hear. Be that as it may, what we are going to do is we're going to rely on the guys that are in-house. Stephen Jones and his motto, we believe in our guys. You know that. We believe in our guys. And that's where it'll be. He's not. We're not going to be signing any big name. Yeah, we'll sign some practice squad guys and so on and bring him in. Now, if there's anything that should at least make you feel better, at least is apparently going the route of being all in and signing all the players and stuff doesn't instantly mean that they're going to gel and do great things. You got to look at Dotson that they traded for, for the Eagles. You got to look at Huff that they brought in and some of the other players. And right now, those free agents aren't helping them do anything. I'm not going to say that the Cowboys are a better team right now than the Eagles. I'm not. We're, we're both trying to find an identity and finding ways to try and win. But when you talk about how much talent was amassed or allegedly thought to amass and look at the Dallas Cowboys that they literally trashed and said they don't care about winning, they stink. And this team is great because of all of the guys that they've signed through forever. Here's the the real problem for the Eagles right now, which signed all their players for, you know, the next three, four years, is they're not looking good. You got Jalen Hurts that you're looking at right now and saying, hmm, He's not able to do the things he could with his legs, which is now affecting his passing game. And you have a coach there who doesn't seem to be the right fit for it. So that's all I have to say about that. But the Cowboys will get back on the field. The Steelers, uh, I have a video of my friend Richard, which was taken Saturday, and he was talking about how great their defense was and how, you know, we were talking about how the offense wasn't. And it's funny because in the course of a week, you flip the script. Their defense looked at app. Their offense, Justin Fields, it was like the light bulb went on. And the thing that's interesting here is we have to look as seeing Baker Mayfield, how he's doing right now. You see Sam Darnold, how he's doing right now in Minnesota. You see how Justin Fields is doing with Pittsburgh. You realize how much coaching matters because you took Deshaun Watson, who seemed to be a great quarterback in Houston, okay? And now all of a sudden, he's in three years with Cleveland and is awful. Maybe it's not the players as much as it is the coaching and the support system around them. So that's all I have to say about that. We, we've got, it's going to be a busy week. Oh, it's going to be a busy week. But I, I, I want to enjoy the Eagles' dose of reality a little bit more here 
uh, before we get out of here. The question to Jalen Hurts. You and Nick are obviously big boys on the team that it was the quarterback. As you enter the bye and you want to find an identity, do you two talk about maybe you know, what you want the message to be to the team or how you kind of want to handle you know, how you guys go into the second part of the year? We have our moments. They have huh. their moments. Yeah. We have our <laughs> moments. What, 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 what was that? He can't hide it. He can't hide it. Uh, to me, I think there's a disconnect. I, th- I saw it all last year at the end of the last, last season. Mm-hmm. I thought there was a disconnect with the head coach and, and the quarterback, certainly. He's just not he, – he can't hide it anymore. And, and what is the it? Got, man, there, I think it's – there's something personal there, too, is what it looks like to me. And, you know, obviously the play, I don't think the quarterback, I I think this young man's not playing with anywhere close to the confidence we saw him playing with. You'll see the same confidence. He almost, he's like, he he is not delivering the ball on time. So he holds the ball longer than any quarterback in the league. And to me, he's almost letting pressure get to him. He's, so, to me, there's no confidence in, hey, I'm going to get this receiver open or whatever. You said something funny to me this morning, but before – when I said to you, well, look, the Eagles were playing without, like, half of their team Absolutely. yesterday. What, what, what is it you said to me immediately? You said they wanted to make good and sure what? That there was plenty of excuses before this game. And they did. That's why I took Tampa over them. All right? And, and to me, it's like, no. Anytime somebody's presenting all those reasons why they're not going to get it done, somebody doesn't have confidence. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they certainly played that way. How the hell can you go into a game, all right, and, and I'm sorry if I'm getting ahead, off topic here Go, a little no, bit. Go, no, stay All on right? topic. You're good. But here's the thing. Baker Mayfield was sacked 12 times the, the previous two games. Right, right up the middle. You got him twice. You got him twice. <laughs> what happened to this damn vaunted pass rush? <laughs> All right? Like, Baker Mayfield oh, converted. Lord. He was part of 20 first downs, the highest in his career. You did That's nothing to disrupt this healing. guy. Yeah. Nothing. And sometimes the team, I think there's a bigger concern here. I think you got way too many independent contractors and nobody playing as a damn team. That's the problem with the Eagles. You, you don't have to be best friends with your head coach, okay? You don't have to be best friends. And, I mean, playing for Bill Belichick like I did, I don't think he had any best friends on the team in terms of players. But we knew one thing. His contributions were immense in terms of what uh, we did. You can't what think about contribution that is Nick Sirianni given to Jalen Hurts or the defensive side of the ball? That's the thing. If you don't feel like there's either of those, listen, Coach, you're, you, I don't, I'm not with you, and then you're not even doing anything for us to help us win football games, now you got problems. Now you got problems because you're almost winning in spite of oh, that. I mean, when certain things have to be decided from the head coaching perspective, all right, decisions have to be made in situational ways throughout the course of the season, the right decision is going to be made. He'll make the right decision. I don't like you, but you'll still make that right decision, and that's where the respect comes in. But I don't even see the respect from, from Jalen Hurts with that response. No, but that's what I mean. Like, that's the, that's the issue. It's not about liking and all that type of stuff, all right? It's about the respect. And there's something – that's why I think there's, there's something a little bit – Odd, a little different. There. It's a disconnect. A little personal. There yeah. is a true disconnect. And they're on their bye, but right? I, I gotta. Here, here's my biggest thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. If I'm Nick Sirianni, the first thing I, I gotta ask myself is, do. By the way, do we meet together? Like, do we have a real team game plan? A win? You know how we're gonna win this game? Game plan. In other words, all the coordinators. I'm meeting with the offensive, defense, special team coordinator. All of us are are going over the plan collectively. Because, look, if I got Vic Fangio in, in case here, guys, I don't have – I'm the offense coordinator. I, I, I'm Boy Wonder. Kellen right? Moore, yeah. Kellen Moore. Look, I don't have my two top receivers, mm-hmm. A.J. Brown and, and Smith. I don't have them. All right? And, by the way, our right tackle ain't playing. We're going to need some hamburger last name helper. Okay? Mm-hmm. And instead, I see a defense that's like, well, we're going to do our job. Your job's to win the game. Sometimes you got to show up and attack your opponent. Instead of just letting them do whatever the hell they want. And, and to me, that's it. They don't get it. It's like independent contract. Oh, we're, we're okay back here. We're not the reason we're losing. Yes, you are. You could almost <laughs> Yes, you, you are. You can almost put it, not contracts, mm. but almost independent units, right? An offensive unit, a defensive it, unit, and a special teams unit. And the man that makes it all mesh together, whether it, well, is the head yeah, coach. And Nick, this is your coach. football team. You're, I'm going to. That's what he needs to do. I've done it. 
I think I think the point you're making is a really good one, and, and maybe the blame for that has to go all the way to the top. If you're going to keep the head coach, but you're going to fire both the coordinators and bring in guys that everyone knows weren't his choices in the first place anyway, you have already set him up to fail. You're putting him in an almost impossible situation. And let me get Dean Wood in here because you made the point, that, that, and you mentioned the name, Shane Steichen. The last time we saw Shane Steichen and Jalen Hurts together, where were they and what were they doing? They were in the Super Bowl, and Jalen Hurts was the best player on the field. Even was over it, Patrick Holmes. Even over Patrick Holmes, he was the best player on the field. Jalen Hurts hasn't looked anything close to what he was at that point. So much of when, 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 they, when those two were together, so much of that was the RPO game. And I think Jalen Hurts is at his best when you get him going running the football. It gets him into a rhythm, and then I think that's where the passing game goes. Now, A.J. Brown being out is definitely a detriment to the Philadelphia Eagles yeah. offense. There's no question about it. But clearly, there is a disconnect offensively in how they're utilizing Jalen Hurts, and he has not been the same since Shane Steichen left to become the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. They need healthy players. Let's just put it safe. Okay. They, they also need healthy players. I mean, Jalen Hurts isn't, I wouldn't say, he isn't, like, you remember Josh Allen, okay, okay, not this week, but, but last week versus versus the Jags. Boom, boom, wheeling, dealing, I mean, making everybody look better. I don't think Jalen Hurts there yet as a quarterback. He needs A.J. He needs Devontae. He needs those guys to help him make, help him look better. That's where he is right now. So to get healthy players back, bye week I think they're on. I mean, They are in their bye week right now. Let's get it right that way because – they are professionals, okay? And if I do not like my head coach, I can still play. Right. I can still play because I'm I'm paying I'm I'm playing for that 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 check that I get to feed my family that's at home, okay? Right. I'm still gonna play, but I need my guys. You know what's interesting about this though, guys, is to lose this game is not some terrible sign. They, they, were, they were badly injured, all their guys were right. missing, and Tampa's a good team, and it was on the road and it was mm-hmm. ninety degrees or whatever it was. 95. But it's the way they lost is the point that you are making. You told me in the pregame <laughs> yesterday, Jalen Carter should have six sacks in this game because of the way the interior of that Tampa Bay offensive line was playing. And so it didn't happen, and that's what bothers you. Yeah, it pisses me off because I'm sitting back going, I, I don't like the lie to, our, you know, to the fans or whatever. Mm-hmm. I expected him to dominate that game. And why didn't he? He never dominated because they ran slide protection. Going, He's getting the center and the guard every time. Why? Because you're not doing anything. You're not, you're not bringing anybody. He's going to be double. Of course he is. I expected him to free up. Let's go one-on-one. Let's push the pocket in this small quarterback's face that wants to bring yeah. some stuff. Big fans, you're a way better coach than this. And Come on. And what the hell? Head. And understand. Look, All righty. I'm going you know to go ahead and end it right there with the Eagles' misery. Um, again, positives, I will say, at least – you know, the Eagles, with this bad taste in their mouth going into the bye week, it's more time for them to stew on this. They'll probably come out and get a victory. Us, we've got a, had a couple extra days to catch our breath. We've lost some key players. Um, but I will say that there's some players that you look at and say, right now they are getting better. You can't look at Cooper BB and say a guy who did not give up any pressures at center going against one of the better interior defensive linemen um, isn't getting better, okay? We saw a few things that were a little bit better on our our running game. I'm not going to say our running game is healed, although in the same way Acho said that, you know, that that should have been a completion, you know, there were some nice runs in there that were called back because of some holds and things. We did a little bit better with the running game this past week. And I have to say that the last two weeks of Mozzie Smith – have actually been really good because he's actually been making some plays and showing up. The first two games, they they weren't good. But he seems to be turning this narrative around as well as seeing overshown. And us being able to hopefully get Deron Bland back, these are positives that will help us going forward and hopefully to absorb the loss of having Micah Parsons and D-Law out. So we'll just see what we're going to see. It's going to be an interesting week, to say the least. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, you know I appreciate you guys. And don't forget.